All right, guys, welcome back to MBTV. This is your host here, Daniel. And uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Um, there's this idea of millennials and investing and financial freedom. You know, we're, we're, we're heavily targeted uh, because, you know, uh, we are positioned in our life to take the burden of like our older generations because um, I'm a millennial, obviously. And most people I know are millennials. Um, so there's a lot of uh, ideas that I want to get across uh, to you um, and this idea of like millennials needing to invest and so uh, what kind of arose this idea why I want to do a live stream on this is that um, I took the I never had a finance background um, and but I knew that it's something that I needed to be to do right I need to master my own way of, of doing things financially um, you know I taught myself investing I, I taught myself how to day trade my mom, my parents never really taught me finance. They never taught me how to save. They didn't really teach me that much in general. Even the school system kind of failed me here where the school system didn't teach me how to financially invest. Uh, so this is actually a really important uh, conversation for me to have with you guys because I cannot stress it enough. And we're going to talk about all the different thoughts that I have. They're in the description, by the way. So, hey, Blake, if you want to jump in, I'll, I'll give you the – the link because Blake's watching. Um, so anyway, you know. So anyway, uh, earlier today, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Snapchat launched their IPO this morning. Uh, opened up at seventeen dollars, but we can, you know, average uh, traders can't get a hold of that unless you have a lot of money. Um, in which case, we have to settle for the premium cost of that of, of that stock per per share at twenty four, what it opened up at. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer, you know, it was a really high, really expensive stock. So, um, but me and my friend are, are trading and we're like kind of watching things, you know, investing and, uh, you know, we're excited because this is something we know we're always going to be doing for the rest of our life. Uh, because we, you know, I taught myself and I taught my friend how to invest. Um, and so, um, you know, I actually really like doing it. So I, I kind of figured out how I was able to become motivated to, um, approach finance in a, in a enthusiastic way not a lot of people can do that i think a lot of the, a lot of it has to do with like us growing up to seeing money as a really bad thing and seeing our parents and seeing older generations and generation um you know millennials you know any other generation uh, like older than us really struggling with this right we have an older generation telling us you know you need that one source of income you need your career nothing else that's what's really going to help you solidify your future blah 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 um which is totally not the case uh when you take a look at you know where we are now as a society you know the economic infrastructure that millennials are now coexisting in uh you know you can't live on one day uh one one job like your parents did back in the day you know afford a house a car uh, you know support a family and work right you know i now work you know you know, you can find the average millennial working two or three jobs and have a side thing that they're doing on the side and they're still struggling. Uh, so it's kind of really important that I emphasize this to the, the common millennial going to school. Uh, you know, something that I really, I really hate seeing is like I'll go to a college or university and I will just, I'll be amazed by how, how many millennials like, all right. So there's like, there's, there's two kinds of millennials. There's the millennials that have it hard, and there's the millennials that have it easy. There's the millennials that have the three or four jobs. Uh, that's the category I, I found myself in. And then there's the millennials that, you know, they go to college, they they kind of grow up, and they're pampered, or, you know, not necessarily pampered, but, you know, they, they, they grew up in a resourceful household, right? And so I'm talking strictly here, United States, uh, or you can be from a different country, and you know, still have this effect. Um, but so, so my point here is that, you know, your upbringing really um, plays a, you know, impact, you know, like people who are brought up in, in rich or, you know, very high to middle to high incomes tend to kind of figure things out easier. Maybe it really depends because your, your parents are really the ones that are going to be showing you this perspective of money. And 
I think a lot of the times millennials get this backlash from older generations. I don't know why they created this infrastructure for us. Um, but every, every millennial aged 20, you know, late like teens till early thirties, that generation, uh, is always the same. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of research about this, you know, the teenagers don't change up until, you know, the, that age from like, later teens to 30s you know that demographic doesn't change even though we're labeled millennials we're really no different than people back in the day that were our age we're still fun we're free we're still learning we're experiencing our mainland sheath in our head and our in our neural pathways are still you know not as solidified so we, we make spontaneous decision making um so you know this whole millennial thing right this coined word term for our age group is totally malarkey. It's totally like doesn't it has it holds no value, holds no fact to it. Uh, but the only thing that we do, what should be associated with millennial, is that we have now taken on our shoulders the weight in which our, our parents are not and our you know and our older generations are giving to us. Uh, millennials need to start investing. They need you know you guys if you're watching this and you're a millennial. You know, odds are you have one or two jobs and you're, you're living with your parents still, but you don't want to live with your parents and you want to get the hell out or you're going to school and you see this coming your way maybe. I feel like there's a ton of college students who are graduating and they just move back with their parents and they're like, now what? You know, I don't know what the real world is like. I just spent, you know, two to six years in college. I got my bachelor's and master's and I don't even know how to talk to an adult in a professional setting. Right. Let alone know what a 401k is, know how to invest, you know, um, it's just like basic things, you know, like taking care of yourself, you know, living in your own place. Um, so like there's there's two different kinds of millennials. I think when you really look at the basics, there's the millennials that really had to figure things out. And then there's the millennial that, you know, and both are not good or bad. You know, I'm not any more privileged from knowing what I know, how, knowing how to take on the world than. The, than the person who is more resourceful, who ha had more res uh, resources than I did, right? So it's just a different life. It's just a different journey. You know, we just got to take our journey for what for what happens. Um, but I have several topics here that I want to talk to and, and breeze through real quickly. Um, not breeze through, but like really crack down on. You know, uh, so to start off this one. Uh, you know, for the millennial, right? You know, just so you know, if you haven't gotten the memo yet. One source of income is a liability. It's a danger. It's a hazard. Uh, why? Why do I say this? And I've, I've mentioned this before, right? Uh, having one source of income is a liability. If something happens to you, like I was just telling my friend the other, like just like earlier today, if you have one income, you work at Dunkin' Donuts, you make minimum wage, you're you're on a tight budget as it is. What happens when you have car trouble? What happens when you have an extra expense because you get sick, right? What happens when you're so, even if like you, you're you're in a relationship with somebody and you own a house with somebody and you take out a liability being your house, being your mortgage, right? Um, a lot of people think that because you buy a car, that's an asset uh, or because you buy a house, that's an asset. It's not an asset until you buy it in full. And if it's anything like a loan, then it's it's not something that you're benefiting from. You're you're better off investing or diversifying, you know, your money with things that add value over time, right? Money that sits in a bank account actually decreases in value. It's called inflation, right? And so similarly, people who buy loans, uh, people who opt in for loans for any kind of loan, like mortgage or a car loan, you know, you're subject. To not only inflation over time of a couple of years, right? But you're also subject to interest. You're subject to like owning that property per year. You know, you're subject to it's just it's just so much. And so, you know, you take a lot of uh, people in situations where they they want to just feel free, so they get their house, they get their car, they they you know they somehow are on loan to everything, whether it's their car or it's their TV or it's something. And so, no one's really setting up. A good example parents are not because the system is rigged so that you're buying on margin or credit everywhere you go everywhere from your stock portfolio you can buy on margin or buy taking out a loan for a house taking a loan for a car 
take a loan out or, you know, pay off things in, in chunks, you know, what happened to buying things in full? You know, these are things, these things are all liabilities because they don't add to your life. They really just kind of make you more trapped. And so as a millennial, we're bombarded with credit cards, we're bombarded with these mentalities and these mindsets towards money and towards taking risk and investments, you know, oh, you know, so like, like, you know, it's, it's almost like common sense and just straight up logic. So you're telling me risk is dangerous, but taking out a liability like a loan is totally fine. Taking out a school loan that you can't, you can't net, like whack off your, your credit score, your credit record, uh, because college loans are like forever there. You have to pay them off or until you die. And if you do die, somebody else has to take up that loan. You're telling me that's more freedom than taking risk to, to increase your, you know, you know, your, your assets, you know, so that's, that's ridiculous to me. Um, I'm like holding a pen for some reason. I don't even know where I found this. Uh, but, um, so like, it's strange to me. It's so bizarre how adults, right. will 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 totally glorify, you know, this one career, you going to school and, you know, you do all this stuff. Thanks. Thanks, Benny. You do all this stuff for your parents. You tell you know they they guide you off a cliff. These parents guide you off a cliff, right? They they tell you to do the one job. You know they they tell you to oh get a job that has a four hundred one k. Horrible mistake, right? It's almost like people are you know people who are older than generation millennial, right? They just went along with you know the person before him, the person before him, and it's like yeah yeah this is how things have always been. This is how it is. This is how it goes. And if you're not going to conform to this, you're dead to me or you're just absolutely wrong. Uh, whereas this is the information age, you know, you're a right to privilege in your own ignorance, right? You don't have to Google search, but if you don't, you're going to be branded somebody who does not care for the truth. You don't care for information, given that everything on the, on the internet is true. But that take, take it with a grain of salt. There's a lot of really good information online, right? A lot of adults don't know that mutual funds are horrible for you, right? A lot of people don't know that 401ks are just mutual funds selected by hedge funds. And hedge fund managers aren't even accurate more than like 6 to 9% of the time. You're better off throwing a dart at the, the stock index than selecting a mutual fund for your, from, your, from your company 401k, right? There's a lot of bull crap out there. And older generations just passed it along to millennials. And that's what has happened. And so a lot of millennials that I've run across are really like, you know, this mindset of, Hey, yeah, I'm just going to save for my retirement. What retirement? There's no retirement when you get to age 50 and 60 and 70, unless you become like a cop or you work for the state. That's a totally different story. But for the average person, you, th there is no working for companies longer than five to 10 to 15 years, unless you're a very high, a high positioned uh, figurehead in that company. Right, unless you work your way up. That's far and few in between, though. Most people want independence now. Companies do not display that longevity or that retention with employees that they used to because now people have choices. People have the internet to just go on ZipRecruiter or snag a job or Craigslist and find a job that, that they like, finding a job that suits their needs. Right. And so um, something that's super simple, and I want to go back to it. You know, having one job is just a liability. It's a, it's a hazard, right? And so how do you overcome this obstacle? You know, as I've been saying in a lot of my different video is like uh, multiple streams of income. Just you have, per, you have a passion, you have tons of passions. You have maybe, a, you have a main purpose at your core and you know, your life is really just a result of like really discovering layer after layer, like an onion, what that purpose is like on the inside, like what is really driving you. You know, you may think it's like a cop at first and then you just really like helping people. And then from there, it's something and then it's something, something. Then you, you find out that you want to be a traveling doctor. You know, everybody's got their own life path and so everybody's different. But my point still stands. You need multiple streams of income. Having one income stream is a li liability, which is people's main job. So I don't care if you sell things on the side on Craigslist and then you have your job. At least you're making that extra income. You know, at least you're diversifying your own protection not only for your downside, but if you have multiple income streams, like you have your job and like you, I don't know, you create necklaces and you sell necklaces and then, you know, you, you teach 
you know, you teach people how to do yoga, right? That's three incomes, right? Now that kind of positions you also be to be in an influx of cash, right? So now you have cash flow to where you can be in a position to actually invest, right? And start creating that, that foundation for security with investment strategies and, and investing either long term or short term, right? So income, you know, creating multiple streams of income not only protects you when things happen or when, you know, just that protection, but it also can give you that opportunity to expand, right? Because that's why we're here, right? We're here to grow and expand and learn and grow and personally evolve, right? To the people that we want to grow into, right? The next topic that I have is we are taught wrong about finance. Were you even taught finance? Which is kind of what I, what I covered before, right? I was never taught finance, and not only was I not taught finance, I was taught the exact opposite. I was taught from my parents how exactly what not to do, and then as a result, I ended up doing it anyway. So I have to do a lot. Of, I have to change a lot of my own conditioning to learn how to. I had to learn how to deal with money. I had to learn how to finance and do finance and budget. But I took it a step further, and I, I really wanted to conquer finance, my own finances, uh, and that's a different story for another day. But the thing is, a lot of millennials, unless like you come from a, a household where your parents really are adamant about like, hey, this is how you do finance, you know, which is kind of like the obligation of your parents, their guides, their mentors, their supporters of, of making you be self-sufficient. If your parents are failing at that, then you need to find that support and education somewhere else. It's not going to be the, in the educational system, but you need to get a mentor or somebody in your life, somebody who knows how to save and deal with finance and learn from them. So you can adopt it into your life and integrate that. Uh, so millennials, I feel like for the most part, aren't taught money. You know, they're taught, you know, some people, you know, like a lot of people, people, uh, a lot of people, it will, it will come natural for you to save money. Some people won't. Some people more compulsive. Everybody's got different kind of preferences to how they deal with money. But one thing can be a constant and it's dealing with money effectively, efficiently, and you can save up and, you know, whatever. You know, you know, effectively utilize money. Have money work for you, right? Millennials don't know how to save money, or and if you do, teach your fellow other millennials because that's really important. That's what I'm doing here. I just want to tell you some facts about millennials and what it's like to invest. Coming from, you know, my perspective, you know, really diving into investments and finance and just actually really loving it. Um, so there's that. Um, you can throw your savings for retirement out the window, right? So for all of you out there who think that you can still save for retirement, good luck. If you think that your mindset, right? If you if you buy into the mindset of, hey, I'm just gonna save for uh, retirement until I'm 63, then I'm done. I can just relax and enjoy life. That's just totally wrong because a lot of you, the majority of people in life are always driven towards their passions and their purpose. We're always going to want to do something on some level, uh, even though, like you know, you can call it quits and get your retirement money by monthly or whatever monthly payments by the government, whatever. Um, that's your choice, but there's more life to that, and even more so, that's not even available anymore. Like I said, do you think that's going to be available 50 years from now, 40 years from now, well, 40 years from now, 30 years from now? I, I don't believe so. More millennials are opting out. Or more millennials by survey are saying that they're trying to do other other things and then save up for retirement because they know it's not going to work. Um, so the next thing, so yes, yeah, so that's pretty much that. It's pretty simple, you know. Throw retirement out the window. You know, you have to have multiple income streams, um, compound interest with your investments, where I will talk about, um, and really grow your abundance, right? Through like what you love to do. Uh, we're growing up with a different economic infrastructure than past generations. And again, I, I already went over this a little bit. You know, when your parents or grandparents were, you know, around, you know, and they were doing their thing when you were when they were your age, they had that car, they were able to have a family, they were able to have a house and do all this stuff because they were getting paid to. And not only that, the company want, you know, was paying them more the longer they stayed with the company. Now, you know, so many people are, are jumping ships, going on to new ships, businesses, and so a lot of people are really looking for the person the, the very individualistic personalized experience of like working either for themselves or for like what they truly stand for uh, which is something I I solely believe you know like that's that's kind of like why I am an 
entrepreneur myself. That's why it's hard for me to work for businesses because like businesses really never get the full scope of like who I am, what I can offer that business. And, you know, regardless of what my skills and special talents are, you know, I, I remain where I am right now. Uh, so the economic infrastructure for where it is right now cannot afford, you know, the average millennial in person cannot afford to have one job and live and be able to do more than just exist, live, go to work and go home, you know, unless you go to school to where, you know, that may not even be the best resolve because school is not only wasted time, it's more, sorry, it's not wasted time, it's it's more time towards an investment that is actually less likely to work out, right? Because we live in a workforce uh, lifestyle now where, you know, and this is this is, has been the case for a while, companies are looking for specialized candidates for positions. People are not looking for generalists, right? So the way that the economy is working right now we're forced into all these different positions that we may or may not like want to do. We may be able to do them, but only broadens our scope, uh, which doesn't help us finding like that one job that needs us to do this to specialize, right? Uh, when you specialize in something, you get paid more for it. You know, that's just common sense. You know, you don't want to go to a life coach like me and, you know, want to work, you know, for, I don't know, let's just say past trauma past trauma coach or ADHD coach or, you know, a, a random niche coach, you know, uh, and like, I don't have a niche, right? You just come to me like, what are you going to work with me with? You know, like, or, what am I going to do for you if I'm just a basic life coach? You know, I focus on dating and relationships uh, because it's something I'm very passionate about. So I like helping guys and couples and marital coaching. You know, I, I love doing that. That's my area of expertise. That's what I love to do. But, you know, you've got to be a specialist in what you do specialist plumber, a specialist something or other, a specialist, you know, it's the same thing. Like when you choose to become a doctor or a surgeon, you don't just become like a general surgeon. You could, and I think there's a specialty for that. But like, uh, you know, I hope my, my point still stands. Um, you know, you need to become a specialist in something. You need to start investing your time, not in school, in part maybe school, because it's something that you may want to do, but also research and grow and educate yourself outside of school of the thing that you want to do that you have to be the best in to be the best to get your customers to to really stand out and to create that income for yourself right if you don't want to go in the business for yourself then you better be the best damn employee that you can and how you do that is through your specialty through your work experience and through that driving motivation to do the thing that you really want to do if you just work towards something that you're not passionate and purposeful in doing that fuse is going to run out and when that does you're going to want to do something else and then something else and then something else and this is every millennials rotating ferris wheel a lot of millennials they they're always jumping around and it's not just because you know they, they're not they, they don't have what it takes you know everybody's got some kind of special skill to give back to the world but the economy and the infrastructure for most government and countries that are out there you know, made different from the United States, but it doesn't really put that focus on really supporting, you know, young people. And again, I'm just saying United States because I know a lot of other countries do do this. Giving that support to millennials and, and younger people growing up to giving them that benefit of time to really learn their crap and to move forward and to create something for themselves. There's countries out there that, you know, they, they give students and yeah, uh, like millennials, all this kind of support. And like here in the United States, we, you know, we get, you know, what? We get, we get, we get positions in companies that don't appreciate and respect the work that is involved because it's dispensable, spent, uh, dispensable. Yeah. Something like that. And, you know, we just, we can be disregarded, you know, part-time can be part-time workers can be, you know, cast off, you know, even full-time. You know, people can be re uh, replaced easily. Uh, you know, it happened to my mom. You know, like she was like a very, very skilled and as a teacher, but she was replaced by two less experienced teachers with you know to you know spend less money on you know on payroll, I guess, whatever. So my idea here is we're growing up with a different ec economic infrastructure. We have to realize this as millennials that the system doesn't support us. So 
we're, we're forced to create multiple streams of income. Um, is this kind of the healthy route? I believe so. What more fun is it to really live on your edge, pursue things that you really love to do while making money doing it? Uh, work, you know, driving towards a, a passion or a purpose that you're really driven for and giving back to the world and getting uh, paid for it out of appreciation for yourself, knowing that you're giving back something to the world and the world is appreciating that gift that you're giving back and they're giving back to you and that's a beautiful exchange. So um, I know I didn't really talk about compound interest. Compound interest is really just pretty much invest, you know, investing, investing, invest, investing, really diversifying your portfolio of stocks uh, or any kind of assets you have. And eventually over time, you know, that really accumulates and then compound interest is really just all of your assets, uh, like making money for you. Right. And so I want to kind of go back. Uh, int is interest a good start for a team? No. Compound interest, you know, investments, great for a team. My point that I really want to make, though, that you, I really want to get across to millennials, regardless of what you, how old you are, up until 30, 40, and whoever who's watching this, it's all mindset. You know, if you ask a millionaire how they view money, they probably love money. If you ask a poor person how they like money, they probably don't like money too much because it's not treating them very well. So you have to ask yourself, how do I see money, and how is that? How is my mindset affecting? you know, the way in which I create abundance for myself because that's what it really is. Your mindset creates your life. And so if you have a, if you think money is evil, you don't think money is a vessel for opportunity and new experiences and to connect yourself to the world. You don't think money can allow yourself to, you know, you don't think money, uh, money is the middleman to, to you, between you and the ventures that you want to pursue. Good luck, because if you think money is evil, then that's all it will be for you. It will be dualistic. You'll live in duality. You'll live in a box. You'll think money is only meant for one thing, which is the value of what things can give you versus the exchange in which what money can serve you for and serve your interests, serve, uh, serve your ventures, serve your investments for personal education, you know, serve you and grow, uh, you know. And so I learned this while, while following a, a day trader, actually, called Antoine Krill. He goes into these mindsets of, you know, money and like how he asked like the video camera guy, like, you know, what can a hundred dollars buy you? And the guy goes, oh, a date. What can I, you know, a thousand dollars buy you? Oh, well, like that's rent, right? What can $10,000 buy you? Oh, a car, right? But the guy the whole time, the cameraman is thinking about it in terms of what it can buy him, not really in a sense what isn't, what he can exchange that for, right? Because he can, he can exchange that for something that can serve him. Right, or he can have that money serve him, you know, by making more money for him. Right, uh, so it's really about you know the the biggest part about millennials and that I want to emphasize to anybody out here watching this is that your mindset towards money and investing changes everything. The moment you realize that, hey, getting up every day and taking that risk to go outside, knowing that you could just die from something, you know, is like the same thing as taking the risk to invest. They're both risks. Everything in life is pretty much a risk, but we've just been conditioned and taught with really crappy mindsets that risking money for investments, risking for more return is some, is somehow really bad. But you know what, when you really experience, grow on these things, you grow on the experience of trying to invest and make money for yourself and you pursue different businesses and you create your own ventures and you see what works and what doesn't work and you just be, and you become driven by what you love and you put that into into your hustle somehow, and you start making your own abundance. Investment investing doesn't seem so hard, right? The hardest thing that people can ever invest in is their time. The next thing is money, right? But it's so easy for people out there to invest their you know sell their soul for minimum wage at McDonald's or sell their soul for minimum wage at you know some retarded retailer that doesn't serve your purpose, and you wonder why you're not happy. Right, and you, and so what's stopping you from doing your own thing? It's the time that you have to commit, and it may not work out. The personal risk of investing your time, right? So if it's one thing I would want to tell millennials is don't be afraid to invest your time when you're so young to to figure out what really doesn't work for you and what does, and and go on your own path and learn how to do everything because that's how you're really going to figure out how to have that abundance and grow in your craft and and do your thing and get per be purposeful and investing for your future so when you can't work anymore and when you're done 
living your life of a purpose and, and, and now you have to take the back seat and watch life or whatever, you know, you have that foundation, you have that, that security, right? So that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Remember to subscribe and all that good stuff. Take care.